Um, there you go, that's the solution. Now, nitrate poisoning. This has killed a lot of cattle. Uh, and it, what's diabolical is it's, uh, it's usually very good hay that'll do it. Um, so this is what happens in a ruminant. Let's forget about the non-ruminants. Uh, nitrate in the feed is converted to nitrite in the rumen and then converted further into ammonia in the rumen and then everything's sweet. Uh, the next slide, I think, demonstrates the problem. Oh, well, perhaps you can't see that, but if you get stuck in this middle stage here, if your rumen is not adapted to turning nitrate quickly into nitrite and even more quickly into ammonia, the nitrite is absorbed into the bloodstream where it prevents the blood from carrying oxygen. And so these animals will be breathing, affected animals will turn brown in their gums, their vagina, anywhere they've got a mucous membrane because the, the, the blood circulating through there is no longer carrying oxygen. That's what kills them. And it kills them quickly. So the textbooks will say, well, that's just, you can see them dotted around there. They were, there were other animals a heap on that little feedlot there. This was just everything that died, of course, were the animals he brought in the afternoon before that were not adapted to the feed. And that's the critical thing. We test a lot of hay for nitrate levels and silage and pasture, and um, we've had some doozy results. But even those very high results that shouldn't be safe to feed to anything, the, the fellow who made the hay will say, well, I'm feeding it to my own cows and there's no problem. Adaptation with a ruminant is a fantastic thing. So that's what you see. Rapid, noisy breathing, what they call chocolate blood, chocolate coloured mucous membranes. They look more purple a lot of the case. If, so if you've got one dead, they do blow up uh, terminally. They go off pretty quickly. You'll see them dotted around with a leg in the air. It looks a lot like a black leg carcass. Uh, fortunately for us, there's a, there's a pretty simple test. There should not be any nitrite or nitrate in an animal's eyeball. So we carry dipsticks with us and we put a few uh, drops of uh, aqueous humour on there and there's your diagnosis and then we send a sample of the feed away. Otherwise, there's not a lot to go by. Um, the abortions, yeah. Animals that survive it, in my experience, survive it completely except for that. Uh, because the, once you deprive the fetus of, of oxygenated blood, well, it's not going to survive that even if the cow survives. There is a, um, an antidote, but it's illegal to use it in food producing animals now. But if you have valuable animals and you know a vet that's got bottles of methylene blue sitting on his shelf still, you'll save them if you're quick enough, but geez, you've got to be quick. Uh, that was an easy diagnosis because there's nothing else in that yard to feed them, but it even shows you that even, you know, what you wouldn't think of as high risk nitrate hay is like, that was Rhodes grass hay. Well, if they're unadapted cattle, and their, their rumen really can't tolerate that level of nitrate in the feed. So, what do we got? Risk factors, yeah. Purchased hay and, feed, uh, hay and silage fed to unadapted cattle. I'd point out though, silage is a much lower risk if it's been allowed to sit. The trouble during this drought is, the silage that some people are getting, it's barely been wrapped and they're feeding it out. It's not silage at all, it hasn't undergone fermentation, and so there hasn't been the opportunity for the nitrate levels to come down, and they come down significantly. The DPI prime fact will tell you, I think it says 40 to 60 per cent, uh, you know, with decent fermentation. We followed some kaikuyu that was cut and made into silage up at Stroud last year, and it was at about 23,000 parts per million when it was wrapped, and it was down to next to nothing uh, after three months. So I think that, you know, what do you do with these high-risk pastures? And I've sampled them and followed them through up at Scone, and they just got worse until I couldn't afford to test them anymore. Uh, so I'd make them into silage, I think is the best solution, and then test them before you feed them out, but leave them wrapped for a while. Yeah, lack of adaptation, hungry cattle, that, that's the classic one, you know, first access, it looks, it'll be the best hay in, on the planet and it's such a disappointing thing for people to spend a lot of money on hay and drag animals through drought and then, put, and then they come out the next day and that's what's killed their animals is the good feed. So just be wary of it. A, a sudden change of diet is never a good idea for a ruminant. You know, there are, there are a number of things that can go wrong and this is the most common lately. So, um, now diet is important though. If you've got your animals on a, a, some pellets in their diets, a, a carbohydrate level, that helps. It helps to reduce the risk. If you've got a healthy room and flora, all the bugs in there, uh, and, and carbohydrates um, contribute to that obviously, as does sulphur, 
Not, don't go berserk, but that seems to help reduce the risk. Plant factors, oats and rye as part, they're famous for it. Heap of it in sorghum though, we're seeing a lot of that. Um, but look, millet, hay, you, you name it. There's nitrate levels, it depends on the fertiliser history of the pasture. It also depends on, and we'll get to it I think in the, in the next um, slide, but some of these factors, have, have the plants been stressed? So if, there, if it's a failed crop that's been made into hay in particular, uh, it's a drama. Um, stage of maturity, so younger plants are meant to be higher in nitrates, um, part of the plant. The, the nitrate levels typically are higher in the stalks of the plant. And now when an animal grazes pasture, it's eating the leaves off normally. So you make it into hay, they tend to eat more stalk than they normally would. So hay has that risk as well. Um, obviously use of nitrogenous fertilisers is, is going to increase the uptake into the plant. Low soil sulphur and molybdenum. You know, areas where there, it, it's really where cattle have defecated and urinated a lot, they're going to have high nitrogen levels. Shady areas, I mean, I wonder about that. Um, the reason the shady areas of the paddock have been nominated is because we're seeing some alarming variation in uh, the nitrate levels in bales from the same paddock. And that makes it very difficult for people, what do I do with the rest of the shed full? Which ones are the dangerous ones? Which ones are okay? Whether it's, a, and I've spoken to various agronomists about it, I'm told that, well, it's probably the stuff that's made around the headlands where the, the irrigator isn't reaching properly and they've been more stressed, maybe it's that. Uh, what is known is that nitrate levels go up uh, in cloudy weather, that sort of thing. So if there's a shady area uh, and where cattle have congregated under trees, maybe, uh, maybe it's going to be higher there. So this is trying to understand why we're getting variation within a batch because that's a bit heartbreaking. Um, there you go, the cloudy weather, drought, wilting. Um, bear in mind though, you make it into hay, the levels stay there for a long time. They don't change. The only thing that will change is if they get a bit wet, then it can turn into nitrate before they, they even eat it, so it might be even riskier. Uh, but essentially, you make it into hay, that's it forever. The, the, the nitrate levels are fixed. You make it into silage and they will decrease. So what do you do with it? We've been through this. Uh, if you've got high risk, par I'd, I'd sample it as pasture, test it. And I'm probably bound to point out the DPI has given us some money and we'll, we'll, at the moment we've been got where we'll get more money. We're doing a lot of feed testing for free. So if you're in that situation where you're wondering, is this a terribly risky crop? Bring a sample into us and we'll send it away and see just how risky it is. If it is a high risk crop, what do you do? Well, you can monitor it. I wouldn't put, obviously, unadapted cattle in on it. That, that, that would be diabolical. Uh, making it into hay won't solve anything. That just becomes a risk for you or whoever you sell it to. But making it into silage, I think, is the safest option where you don't want to waste it. Um, this here is an issue to us. And I think, yeah, I've, we mentioned that. I'd be worried about the nitrate levels in the sorghum hay more than the prussic acid content. Can anyone read this? Well, I'll read it for you. <laughs> These are two different samples of sorghum hay. This one killed a dozen heifers overnight last week. This one is one of the bales that was left in the shed from exactly the same batch. Right, so that's the variability within a batch. And, the, and those animals have been on that same hay for weeks. And so I'm guessing they'd been on it at that level. And then you have the odd bale like that, and we've had them up to 56,000 parts per million. So it, it's just one of those things, you, you, and that's, that's very frustrating because we can't afford to test every bale for you. And some people that have these deaths then are looking in their shed going, well, what do I do with the rest of that? Which are the dangerous bales and which aren't? So what would be a fantastic thing if the government has the money for some research would be to be able to create some sort of test strip for farmers that's cheap, and easy enough to use, and with hay that's difficult because it's a, you, know, you need a liquid component to put dipsticks into. Um, I just cut them up and add a bit of water and make a soup and put my dipstick in to give me some indication of just how high the levels are. If it jumps straight to purple, I think, well, we better send that away for a test. But if we could come up with some sort of dipstick that would allow you cheaply to test every bale, then that variability that we're getting across these batches would be solved. 